I've made three chestnut countertops. One for the bathroom in the house, one big long one for the countertop in my guest cabin, and one for the bathroom right in the shop here. And then every single one of them, no matter how hard I tried, I ended up getting a domino right in the cutout for the sink. And they weren't that complicated. All they had was one cutout. And I still ended up with a domino in it. I am determined, this is the fourth time, I'm determined not to let that happen this time. And this countertop's considerably trickier. So I drew it in SketchUp and I cut this full-size pattern for the countertop too. And I laid out both the sink and the cooktop. I made templates for both of them too. This is a template for the stove or the cooktop. There's a little template for the sink and I'll be able to use these a little bit later too when I make the actual cutouts in the finished countertop. But that way I was able to take the full size cutout and slide it around. I first drew in exactly where the face frames were going to be at the end of the cabinet and the front of the cabinet. I even drew in the overhang on the countertop because that was really critical with the stovetop. I wanted to get the stove as close as I could to the front of the cabinet because all that's out here are the knobs. And that way I'd have room in the back for some kind of non-combustible little splash behind the stove. And I'll have a little splash that's non-combustible on the side here as well. And that leaves me a maximum amount of space between the sink and the stove. All this planning is really important because I want to be happy once I'm done with the sprinter. Now this sink is as close as I can pretty much get it to the face frame on the end of the cabinet, which is right here. This line represents where the other countertop is going to come in. And that's the countertop that hinges down so that you can get in and out of the van. And when you're in the van and the door is closed or you're in the van and you want to do some serious cooking, you can just take this countertop, hinge it up, and it'll be supported off of a leg on the side. So here we go. I'm actually ready then to start laying out the lumber that's going to make up this counter. So I cut a few pieces. This is the chestnut I'm going to use in its raw condition. I got a full length piece for the front, so it's continuous even across the hinged part of the countertop, and a full length piece for the back, because that's continuous too. The cutouts will be in the middle of these two pieces. And then I even cut some shorts, two for in here. And yeah, they're long, because I'm going to mill these first. And once I mill them, then I'll cut them really close, like probably within an inch the length that I need and I'll rip everything so it's exactly the right width too for this 20, I think it's a 21 inch or 21 and a half inch wide countertop. Whatever that cardboard is, that's how wide this countertop's gonna be. And here's another piece of uh, chestnut that I'm gonna mill up so I can cut the small pieces that end up framing, that end up filling in this, this little section right up against the bed. And there it is. All I gotta do now is take all of this material that's almost two inches thick run it through my surface planer and my joiner, get it perfectly flat and smooth, and then I can start ripping it to get the right proportions for the width of the counter. And once it's ripped, I'll cross cut it so it's maybe an inch long. And then I can position every single domino according to this template. And hopefully this time when I make my cutouts, I won't see those domino mortises when I'm done. These boards are full of nails right on the edges here. If you look at them, you can figure out real quick where they're from. They're all joists, old chestnut joists that were nailed in right through the top because there's very few fasteners anyplace else. And the bottoms of them, I've even run them through my joiner already because there were no nails in the bottoms at all. But I can't get all the nails out of them. Here's a few that I've pulled already. And, you know, I grab a hold of them with my dikes, my wire cutters, I smack them with a hammer, and I try and lift them out, and the ones that I can't, I just take a big nail set and beat them down in there. And then it will be safe to run this through my joiner again. So I'm going to joint this side just to clean it up, 
And then if I have to rip these, I'll rip them off this side because I probably won't run into fasteners. And if I end up with boards that have holes in them on the exposed front edge of the table, on the front edge of the countertop, that won't matter. I'll just fill the holes with epoxy and it'll look kind of cool. But this is what the finished grain looks like in that chestnut. And that finishes it. I marked every single domino with a straight pencil line and I labeled every single piece so I can get them right back in in the same kind of order that they're in so I can match up these mortises that I've marked for. And each one of these mortises for the dominoes is going to miss openings like the sink opening. This is where the cabinet actually ends. Right here, the cabinet ends, there's a little bit of an overhang and this domino is going to slip right into this area where the cabinet ends before the overhang. So everything should work out pretty close this time, I hope. This is the first time I've ever used a template like this and I think taking a little bit of extra time, a little bit of extra effort, it's going to really pay off. Now all I got to do is take the domino machine and I'm using the XL with 10 by 50 dominoes so they're not that deep and that means I just got to set up the depth of cut here for 25 millimeters which is exactly where it is. I'm using inch and a half stock here so I also want to set this fence up about 20 millimeters from the cut line and that is right here. This is where I make that adjustment. So all I have to do is take the fence, lift it up, set it right down tight against that 20 millimeter index and tighten it down. And that puts me almost exactly three quarters of an inch to the center of the cutter. And you can see on the face of this tool, right there is a little notch in the center and that's the center of the cutter right there. So you can measure off the fence to that notch. So I'm almost all set to go. The only other thing I have to do is I have to adjust the width of the mortise. I can make it wider than I need or snug. And I want this snug so everything lines up on my straight lines. Every single one of my end cuts will line up precisely where I want it. I'll turn all of these pieces around. At least the ones that are facing the other way like this one. And now, I can go to town. And that should do it. Before I go any further, I want to check these. There's, this, there's the mortise. Perfect. Just where I needed it. Now, if you look through this little opening right here, that little triangular delta-shaped opening, you can see my pencil line right there. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to line that, that little delta opening, that sharp point of it, with the pencil line. And I can check that to make sure that this index line is also on the pencil line. And then I hold the tool down with my hand right here, pushing down, not really hard because I don't want to lift the back end up. So just pushing down nice and snug, firm. And then I hold the tool from the handle at the very, very back. That way when I apply pressure on the cutter, I'm pushing straight into the workpiece. 